Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Uh, just some thoughts, right? Uh, nothing, nothing too particular. I'm still talking about community because that's been an ongoing theme the last couple of videos. And I know some of you just get tired of hearing this, but I'm telling you folks, uh, when, when it all starts really hitting the fan, and I mean, there's little bitty pieces of it that's been hitting the fan for a while. But when the big old dung pile finally hits the whirly gig, uh, if you're not connected to some kind of group or tribe, if you think you're going to be out there lone wolf in it, you're going to be in a world of hurt. I mean, I know that there are some of you that are totally capable of being the lone wolf. You know, some of you guys that have years of combat experience or survival training, you're fit, you're, you're, you're just capable of it. But the vast majority of you just aren't going to do so well if you're not connected to some kind of tribe, mutual assistance group, prepper group, mag, uh, you know, team, whatever you want to call it, just a community. It's very important. And, and as the world starts to spiral out of control more, um, I, I don't predict too much on here, but this is one thing I will predict. I predict that one of the few ways to really thrive, not just survive, but really thrive in those times is being connected with a group of like-minded individuals, a family where you work together, you play together, you fight together, you survive together. Um, and so I think it's very important uh, for us to really focus in on that. Uh, before I do that, I just want to mention, remind some of you, especially up in the Northeast, you folks have gotten a lot of snow up there. Big blizzard. Looks like you're going to be, and probably already are today, warming up. So be ready for some flooding. Um, most likely, or some of you are already experiencing that, but it looks like over the next couple of days, probably going to be experiencing even more of that because all those feet of snow that came down on you and made life miserable uh, this past weekend is all melting off and it's got to go somewhere. So make sure your preparations are ready for that. If you live in those areas, you should kind of already have a good idea of how it's going to be for you. So just get ready. Um, you know, I was, I was thinking about this and one of the things that's, that is definitely related to community and, and, and building networks around you is, is being able to work with other people, to create coalitions. Um, and this is something that a lot of people sometimes have a hard time doing, doing right, wrapping their head around it. Because we kind of get narrow-minded that, that we only want to work with people that are just like us. They have to believe just like us, think just like us, act just like us, and that's only ones that we want to, to work with. Uh, and that mentality is fine for your inner group. Uh, that's totally fine for the people that you want to allow in your inner circle, that that real family uh, that, that you're, you're working with of saying, you know, we have these certain guidelines, you need to have this kind of a belief system, um, you, you know, practice your religion this way, whatever, and that's fine. But when you're building coalitions with people, that's not always an option. And and we need to, to be aware of that and ready for that and start building those coalitions now. Uh, because it's going to be, and I've said this so many times before, it's going to be so much easier now to make connections with people than it will be after it really starts happening. Once Once things really start spiraling out of control, well, people aren't going to be very trusting of others. They're just not going to do it. Um, I mean, it could eventually get to a point that it's, you know, shoot on sight kind of mentality. And so the idea of going up to a stranger and trying to work out some type of relationship with them, some type of coalition is going to be much less likely. So what I would encourage you, especially if you're in groups now, is to build relationships with other groups and other businesses and things like that. And again, you don't have to be exactly like-minded when you're building coalitions. Um, maybe there's another prepper group and, and their focus is on a different type of religion base, or maybe they're non-religious at all. Maybe they're just, that's not a focus of their, of their, their group. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to know and they have to know all the inside information. It just means that you, you have a mutual agreement that, that you, you can get along and that you can help each other in times of need. Um, this, is, this is something that we all need to be working on. Uh, and as we're, we're out and about, maybe in a, a lot of this has to 
is determined by where you live. You know, if you live in a, a very liberal area, big city area, it's probably going to be a little bit harder for you to do this. But you, you rural folks, this is going to be a lot easier. You know, there may be a guy down the road that's the mechanic, and you don't see eye to eye on everything. You know, maybe, maybe you know, you're very religious, and he's very much not. Um, but he's someone that's a pretty good old boy, and <clears throat> probably is just aware of uh, of what's going on in the world as much as anyone. And so building kind of that relationship with them so that when things go down, you can go up on his property and say, hey, you know, can is there some kind of thing that I can trade with you to help me fix my vehicle? It's going to be much more likely to do that because you've already established a connection with him. Uh, there, Like I said, there may be other groups in your area that you can start talking to um, and say, you know, you have your group, we have our group. We're not trying to, to integrate the groups or anything, but we should at least have some type of agreement that we will communicate, share information, intel, that, you know, we may even come to each other's aid or help each other out. Um, you know, you may, your, your group may have um, a lot of resources in a certain area. Maybe you have a doctor in your group. Let's just use that as an example. You have a doctor in your group um, and, and they can perform surgeries even because of their skill. Uh, and this other group over here, they don't have that. They don't have a doctor, but maybe they have something else. Maybe they have someone like an electrical engineer, someone that really understands uh, solar systems or things like that. And so you can work with them. And, and maybe they come over and use your doctor when they need it, and then you use their, their electrical engineer. Um, I, that's a very simplified example, but I think it's a very good one. Um, it, it's What we have to be aware of is that as things are happening, that, that are happening now and that will continue to happen, it, it, um, it's very easy, let's put it that way, it's very easy for folks like you and I to kind of really turn inward and put those walls around us uh, and, and go into this hyper-protection mode uh, that we're, we're not allowing um, uh, people from the outside in uh, uh, unless we scrutinize them heavily. And that's okay for your inner workings. Uh, but let's not be too um, standoffish when we're working with other groups uh, because it's going to be necessary to build a network of coalitions. It's been something that's been a big thing on my heart here in the Ozarks uh, where I live because there's so many other people that are like-minded. I mean, the, the group that I talk about the, that we work, our group, our group here, um, we're certainly not the only kind of prepper homesteading type of group in the Ozarks. It's all over the place. And so one of the things that I've been trying to do is build relationships with those other groups. Um, and some of them are very similar to ours in every way. And some others, you know, they, they may focus on another area. Uh, for instance, I've been talking to a, a homeschool group, a different homeschool group than our own. And um, they're, they're, their focus of their homeschool group is to build a home education community uh, that's that's contrary to uh, the current system. And most of their, their people are very like-minded in the stuff that, that our group does. And so working out on that, building a coalition together so that, you know, there may be times that their homeschool group and our homeschool group work together. Just another example. Um, this is the kind of stuff that we should be open-minded to. Of course, you have to be cautious. You should always be cautious, but it doesn't mean that you just turn off the idea of working and building coalitions with other people. Um, and, and who knows that as the times continue to change and, and go get out of control, really, uh, there could be definitely networks uh, of this kind of stuff all over the place where, um, you know, you, you know about other groups in other areas that as you may be traveling, uh, you could find, um, you know, uh, safety in certain other areas that, you know, well, I, I need to get from point A to point B. And in between that is, you know, particular group that we have a relationship, uh, you know, I can refuel or, or, uh, you know, get rest there. There's all kinds of scenarios where this could be very beneficial. Um, and so I want to encourage you as individuals and as groups, because I know many of you are involved in small groups. Some of you are public and some of you are private. But the point is, is uh, work on building
building coalitions with people around you, other businesses, other like-minded groups, uh, individuals, maybe your neighbor, maybe you and your neighbor uh, don't see eye to eye on everything, but you see eye to eye on enough. You know, maybe there's a difference of, of religious belief or a difference of some kind of political, but yet you're still kind of preparing because you both think that the world is probably going to end soon anyways. Uh, it doesn't hurt to build a relationship with that person uh, so that so that you have this mutual agreement between you and your neighbor uh, when things get get kind of hairy that way they're not an enemy to you uh, they're someone that you can uh, view as a, as a fellow comrade of, of helping you uh, you know defend your property and then you do the same for them uh, this is this is an area that I really think a lot of people fail in uh, or at least are weak in. Uh, and we need to work on it. So all of you prepper groups out there, your off-grid communities, your homestead communities, your, your homeschool groups, all of you like-minded people uh, need to start working together. You know, the far left, they do it. Uh, you can you can watch these protests and stuff and you'll see all these various different left-leaning groups and a lot of times they hate each other. They really do, they don't get along. But when it comes to their, their Marxist socialist um, uh, thing they 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 all come together for that and and we could actually learn a little bit from that and pull together uh, because it's 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 not just that we want to survive but we really want to thrive through this uh, and I believe it's possible uh, and and going tribal is going to definitely be one of the ways that that's going to happen folks it's time to get your houses in order prepare yourselves mentally physically and spiritually thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.